Hello and welcome to this introductory lesson about the nervous system. In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about how the nervous system is organized and also introduce you to neurons, which are the building blocks of the nervous system. Throughout this lesson, I'm going to answer three main questions. What makes up the nervous system? What is a nerve cell? And what does a nerve cell look like? Your whole nervous system can be divided into two main parts. The central nervous system, which is your brain and your spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which are the nerves that carry messages to and from the central nervous system and to other parts of the body. Here we have a great diagram that illustrates the difference between these two parts of your nervous system. In yellow, we have the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord. And then branching off your spinal cord, we have these other nerves in blue. And these are our peripheral nerves, and they form our peripheral nervous system. So their job is to receive information uh, about our body and about our environment and feed that up through what we call the sensory pathway through the spinal cord to our brain, where our brain can then process that information and make sense of it. Conversely, once the brain has made sense of that information, that sensory information, it can then create impulses or commands to various muscles and organs and glands around the body. And then those impulses are sent from the brain down the spinal cord and out through this peripheral nervous system to the relevant muscles and glands and organs that need to be activated as a result. And we call that the motor pathway, the pathway leading away from the brain. So we have a sensory pathway, which uh, relays information towards the brain. The brain processes that information. And then we have a motor pathway where information is sent away from the brain towards uh, the relevant muscles and organs and glands that need to be activated. At this particular time, I like to teach my students about this diagram. So we have the brain and the spinal cord, and you can see that there are all of these nerves branching off different areas of our spinal cord, going down our arms and going down our legs. We can divide our spinal cord into four main areas. We've got the cervical spinal nerves, C1 to C8, the thoracic spinal nerves, T1 to T12, the lumbar spinal nerves, L1 to L5, and the sacral spinal nerves, S1 to S5. And each of these areas is responsible for commanding and receiving information from specific areas in the body. So let's look at this sacral area, for example. You can see that these nerves branch off your spinal cord at the bottom here and go down our legs. So these nerves would be responsible for sending messages from your brain to your leg muscles to allow you to move your legs. And they would also receive information from the skin in your legs and send that information up to your brain. So you can tell if someone's touching your leg, for example. If you damage this part of your spinal cord, you seriously risk damaging the ability for your brain to talk to your leg muscles. And so you may lose the ability to control your legs and you would become a paraplegic. If you damage your spinal cord higher up, for example, these nerves are really important for controlling some of your major organs and also things like the diaphragm, which is a muscle that sits below your lungs and contracts and relaxes to inflate and deflate your lungs. So you can imagine if you damage the pathway between your brain and your diaphragm, your brain can no longer talk to your diaphragm to tell it what to do, and you could potentially suffocate. So you can see that this spinal cord is incredibly important for allowing your brain to tell different parts of your body what to do, and also receiving information from different parts of your body. And that's why this spinal cord is actually encased within big chunks of bone called vertebrae. Let's now talk about nerve cells, which are the building blocks of this whole nervous system and are really responsible for transferring these messages throughout the body. So trillions of nerve cells or neurons or neurons, they're all the same thing, make up the nerves in the nervous system. Nerves carry electrical messages called nerve impulses. And these impulses can only travel in one direction. They can't go backwards. But now we know that nerve cells are the basic building block of the nervous system and they transport electrical messages throughout the body. But what does a nerve cell actually look like? It looks like one of these. So let's go through the individual parts. 
in the middle, this big area here, that's called the cell body. And that contains the nucleus and is the control center of the cell. And if you've seen my videos about cells, you would know that the nucleus is called the control center because it contains DNA. And DNA is basically a set of instructions that tell the cell what to do. These finger-like projections extending out from a cell body are called dendrites. And these receive messages from other neurons. This arm that extends out from the cell body, this main arm, is called the axon. And that sends nerve impulses in one direction away from the cell body. Around the axon, we have, and some neurons do have this, some don't. But in this case, it does. And we call this the myelin sheath. This is a coating around the axon. It's like a layer of insulation. And that allows the signal to travel much faster. And it also helps insulate that signal from other neurons that might be nearby. And at the end of the axon, we have these terminals. And these connect up to other dendrites from other neurons and help pass the message on. It's worthwhile noting that there are different types of nerve cells or neurons throughout your body. For example, the one that I just showed you most closely resembles a motor neuron. And these neurons carry messages away from your central nervous system. So they carry messages from your brain through your spinal cord and into your effectors, which are muscles or glands that receive messages and put your commands from your brain into effect. So it could be, you know, secreting various hormones or chemicals or it could be contracting your leg muscles to allow you to walk. Another type of neuron is a sensory neuron. And these basically work in the opposite way to motor neurons. Instead of carrying messages away from your brain, sensory neurons carry messages towards your brain. So they receive information from your, from your sense organs, like in your eyes, your ears, your tongue, and your skin. And they feed that environmental information or the information about your body up through your spinal cord to your brain so that your brain can make sense of that. Earlier in the video, I was showing you some diagrams and talking about nerves within the body. Nerves are made up of bundles of nerve fibers, and nerve fibers are made up of neurons. Let's get a little bit more technical and look at how these neurons actually talk to each other. How does a signal get from one neuron to the next neuron in the chain? Well, let's start off by looking at some diagrams. We've got a neuron here, and it's carrying an electrical signal, and it's passing it on to the next neuron in the chain. Let's take a closer look at this particular connection here, this junction, and we call this connection the synapse, where we've got the axon terminal of this neuron, connecting with the dendrite of this next neuron. So here we've got the axon terminal. The signal is transmitting across this gap called the synaptic cleft to the dendrite of the second neuron here. So this whole connection is called the synapse. And these chemicals that transmit the signal from this neuron across this synaptic cleft to the next neuron are called neurotransmitters. We know of at least 50 different types of neurotransmitter, and these control which nerves fire and when. You might have even heard of some of these neurotransmitters before, like dopamine, which controls voluntary movements and regulates pleasurable emotions. This can be increased through drugs such as nicotine, heroin, cocaine, and opium. Serotonin affects mood, emotion, sleep, eating, and perception, and that can be affected by LSD. And you might have heard that eating chocolate or exercising releases endorphins, and these relieve pain and stress and promote calmness. The thing is, I've mentioned some drugs here, and people that consistently take these drugs to release dopamine, it means that their body becomes dependent on taking those drugs for dopamine release and becomes much, much worse or almost incapable of releasing dopamine naturally. So the last thing I really wanted to talk about in a bit of detail in this video was this myelin sheath. So if you recall a few minutes back, I showed you a diagram of a neuron, and you might recall that the myelin sheath is this layer of insulation around the axon of the neuron. And this myelin sheath insulates the neurons from each other and increases the speed 
of the nerve impulse. And to really put that into perspective, the speed of a nerve impulse in a neuron with the myelin sheath, with this insulation, is 200 meters per second. The speed of a nerve impulse without this myelin sheath is only half a meter per second. That is a massive difference in nerve impulse speed. And there are some neurons that do have this insulation, but there are also some that purposely don't. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. While we're talking about the myelin sheath specifically though, it's worthwhile mentioning a condition that you've probably heard of called multiple sclerosis. And in multiple sclerosis, that sees a degeneration of this myelin sheath around various neurons around the body. And so therefore it becomes much less efficient and almost impossible for some messages to be passed from your brain to various parts of your body. A few seconds ago, I mentioned that there are parts of the body where the neurons do have this myelin sheath, and there are also parts of the body where neurons don't have a myelin sheath. And a place where we see this in the most obvious way is in the brain. So if we cut the brain in half and look inside it, you can see that there's this light colored matter inside it in the central part. And then around the outside, we have this darker area. And this lighter part we call white matter. And that consists of neurons that do have myelin sheath. So these signals travel super, super quick inside the internal part of the brain. Around the outside of the brain, we have this darker area. And we call this gray matter. And this consists of neurons that don't have myelin sheaths. So that's it for this lesson. Generally at this point, I usually get my students to draw, color in, and label a diagram of a neuron. And in the labeling, I get them to include and write a description for each of the following key structures. The cell body, the dendrites, the axon, the myelin sheath, and the axon terminals. And I also encourage my students to draw an arrow to show the direction that the signal is traveling in as it moves through the neuron.